details at the event. Everybody says they want details. There ain't no details, but details at events or details in the business. I'll take details in the business versus the events. Now we're going to dive into this and let's just dive into this factory, mega factory in Cali. This is where the details matter. And this is where Tesla provides massive amounts of details. Damn events for stockholders. I look at the business Warren Buffett style. Today we're going to be talking business. The company that we're going to be interviewing today is very well known to the city of Lakebrook, really to the world at large. The epitome of the word innovation. The mission for Tesla is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. That begs the question, uh, why Lakebrook? Largest utility scale battery factory in, in all of North America. Wait, hold on. The largest scale battery factory in all of North America. Put some respect on our name. The mega factory here in the city of Lakebrook. Today we're going to be interviewing Tesla. Okay, he's not interviewing like Tesla. He's interviewing somebody at the company at Tesla. But anyways, let's go. It's residents and also uh, the future plans that it has in store, um, again, to be a very prosperous city. Um, so today we're going to be talking business um, and uh, specifically the company that we're going to be inter interviewing today is uh, very well known to the city of Lathrop um, and really to the world at large. Um, a company whose founder is, um, I believe, really the epitome of the word innovation, um, designing products ranging from electric vehicles, um, solar rooftops, um, literally building tunnels, uh, sending rockets into space. And I believe the latest um, and perhaps the greatest uh, thing that um, the founder has developed is a computer brain um, interface called Neuralink. Um, and so today we're going to be interviewing Tesla. And specifically, uh, we're going to be shining the spotlight on their mega factory here in the city of Lathrop. Um, so now, mega factory in California. And where do you see a mega factory of BMW, Volkswagen, Ford, GM, Apple, Facebook? I mean, I could keep going, but I'm going to stop. NVIDIA. <clears throat> okay. So. We're creating factories, creating jobs, and not only just creating factories, like the most advanced factories in the world and the only factory of its kind in the entirety of North America. And these employees also are amazing because these employees are able to figure out how do we build a factory like this because it's never been done in North America. Shout out to Asia. Asia has done it. Asia continues to sc score buckets on the scoreboard, but as far as North America is concerned, we're not even in the race until Tesla comes, but you guys still underestimate them and they don't deliver and they're a failure and they lie all the time and they don't provide details at a robo event, but they provide massive amounts of details in the product and the service. But okay, I said that before. I'm just saying it again. Presenting uh, the uh, Tesla brand today um, in the Lakeland facility is a plant manager, uh, Javier uh, Corral. Um, and so Javier, we're happy to have you here. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Oh, thank you. I appreciate the introduction, Paul. I was super excited to have you here at the Mega Factory? Is this your first time at Tesla? This is the first time, yeah. Okay, so I'm glad you truly really enjoyed the tour uh, across the Mega Factory and looking forward to have this meaningful conversation. As in, as and then let's skip a little bit forward so we can find some information about what they're really going to get into. Here we producing go. a Mega Pack the right way. Uh, and so we're talking about producing the Mega Pack the right way. So he's going to get in details about it. <laughs> details. The first time that we are actually assembly that, uh, then enable it the right and making it cost effective um, for our customers. So while we're going over this entire transition yeah. and learning, it's important that we not only focus on the what, but why we're doing it and how to do it. Got it. So um, going back to uh, the customer, so um, uh, do, you, do you know the number of um, projects that you guys have done per date um, in terms of uh, the mega packs? Uh, that information is available. Oh, okay. uh, normally, to give you some uh, background, like these projects are, it's, it's not, we have teams and field services that are deployed around the world, depending on the projects. Um, it's not like we have a tracker of like X amount of megapacks that are, are getting installed per day because it's different than running a production line. Uh, normally, it's like there is partnership between our customers and the particular countries and the regulations in which they, they are basically are mapping the entire project, um, like, like going over everything that takes uh, from 
from the time that you have the land to actually installing yeah. the project. And while they are going over those processes, different countries, different cities, the regulation change. So the projects can like, the time of the project mm -hmm. can change based on that permitting. Uh, but we always uh, have a kind of like a healthy pipeline of projects that, that we're working at the mega factory. I think is if you just basically walk the yard, yeah, uh, you can see like the amount of mega packs that are getting a stage there that are ready to chip. And in each one of those mega packs, they have option codes that are tailored to specific customers. So it's not like they are waiting there to be bought. Uh, they already have an owner and, and we're they already have an owner. They already been sold. They've just been waiting to be shipped. Of course, downrange, there's a lot of planning that goes into building out these projects. It's not simple, right? Not only to the allocation of land and regulation and all the technical expertise that's required, but the logistics and the administration is all in the financing. It's also a part of it. And then so the product is ready. It's tailored for a specific client and the client's just waiting to receive it. Now they're waiting to ship it because the client possibly has something that might be holding up the project or they're not ready to accept the actual packs. And installation is done pretty easy, very quickly. So again, here we are performing, but nobody cares. Waiting for the, for the right time for their shipment. So by the time that they get there, we can quickly deploy them and, and, and the customer can start experience the benefits of installing a Megapack. Well, let me ask a question that um, I'm sure obviously you'll be able to answer as a plant manager. What is the production rate? of uh, the mega packs right now what does that look like obviously you guys are still wrapping up uh the goal like you said at the end of the year is to get to 40 gigawatt uh, hours uh what is the what is the uh production rate in terms of being able to put a mega pack together and out the door um is it a day an hour what does that what does that look like so we have different like you have the entire cycle time and you have back time but in terms of like for the purpose of answering your question in terms of magnitude as a site um, last year we were able to validate our capacity to 20 gigawatt hours and like we, this is publicly disclosed. This, this facility was designed to drive 40 gigawatt hours. Uh, you have the opportunity to saw uh, some of the construction that is going on and, and the new assembly lines that, that are there. And, and basically we're on track to, to wrap up the year with uh, achieving the, the ramp to the 40 gigawatt hours. And this is why the factory is still ramping, right? They're still being very productive, even though it's not completed yet. So imagine if you have an assembly line and 50% of it's completed, you can only push out so much product that even when that product is completed, it's already sold out. So there's back orders of the mega packs. Now, at the same time, we're still ramping up in order to see the demand. So you guys think there's a bunch of demand in artificial intelligence semiconductor chips, which is uh, true. And, you know, let's say NVIDIA has a superior product and they do. Um, Tesla has a superior product on the energy side and also energy is needed not only by NVIDIA, but also by TSMC and every other big business that needs energy. Actually, it all comes down to energy. So there we go. Got it. Um, question on um, net net guys, a large demand. Let's move to the next one. Material. I know, obviously, like, for example, we're in obviously 2024, well past the era of COVID that we all went through um, that started in 2020 and lasted really for a couple of years. Um, I guess, well, you guys, uh, started in 2019, you said, right? Oh, 2021, 2021. Okay. So that was kind of really in the mid, in the midst of, uh, uh, COVID really. So were there any, um, I guess two part questions, were there any supply chain issues that you guys, um, went through for the mega packs and, uh, kind of looking ahead, maybe in potential lessons learned, um, would that same, if roadblocks that you guys encountered, uh, would that be encountered again, would you say, or have you guys navigated that process where? even a disruption that the world uh, went through in terms of supply chain. Uh, yeah, what, what did you guys uh, experience? Now, he's gonna ask him about their experience during the pandemic, but I want somebody to listen who's an investor closely to kind of think about it and say, wow, now let's see what they did and let's see if we could extract the skill set, maybe the IP or and maybe the actual culture at this company to be able to not actually collapse and file for bankruptcy or need a loan from PPP, but to be able to thrive under such conditions and be able to move on a dime for any crazy curveball that mother nature throws at them. And during that time. So that's a, that's a great question. I think uh, all the companies, not only like Tesla learn a lot during the, during the COVID times and as you're aware, there was a, a shortage of power electronics uh, globally, uh, mainly chips. So that is that is one of the issues that not just us, but companies in general face. So uh, at the beginning of the program, uh, we, we did experience some shortages of, of raw materials, but 
our supply chain team is like super solid team. They were able to quickly engage with the right uh, suppliers and, and build a strategy to overcome the shortage, uh, basically catch up on the ramp. And currently we have, I'm, I'm confident to say that we don't have any uh, raw materials uh, limitations for the, for the scale of the mega pack. <laughs> See guys, and even during that time, the team was able to change course and change direction and overcome that obstacle. The equivalent would be like when you guys say, oh man, Corby, Kobe Bryant, one time he got sick and you know, most players probably wouldn't play if they were sick, but Kobe Bryant, he had an IV of Gatorade. No, I'm just kidding. People would just go overboard with it, but he got an IV and he was back in the game. He was still being able to perform while he was under the weather, while he was sick, he was still able to go out there and score. That's amazing. Even if he's sick, like that obstacle, he overcame it, man. That shows the potential. That shows the skill set of Kobe. And the same thing applies to this company. Same thing applies to Tesla and the team at Tesla to be able to still, under those conditions, make things happen. Uh, we have learned to prepare for that. And, and Tesla, as part of one of their core principles, is like we're always like innovating and trying to be vertically integrated. So Megapack is not the exception for, for that philosophy. So. We're constantly, number one, partnering with the right vendors and, and ensuring that we procure the, the raw materials that have the right quality uh, to meet our customer expectations. And what I would say meet, to exceed the customer expectations and be that market leader. Uh, but not only that, it's like, how do we learn how to do it so we can have kind of like full control of our destiny? Got it. So you, you said the, uh, you mentioned the word vertical integrated. What does that mean exactly? Vertical integrated is basically you, you are self-sufficient in terms of like your entire supply chain. So if, if being vertically integrated uh, will be like, you are not relying on a particular supplier of, of raw materials. So there was, uh, there was some news like about the, the, some of the uh, new factories or uh, new businesses that Tesla uh, is acquiring or is building or is designing or building from the ground up. So uh, we're always like a big confidence. Megapack is a great example. Yeah. yeah. Like, if you look at the prior version of the Megapack, we used to like kind of like outsource the, the enclosure of the Megapack. Okay. Now we're basically vertically integrated. We're building. See, so he's talking about specific things that they changed. Previously, the outsource of the actual Megapack, they had to get it from a different vendor. But now they vertically integrated and they are doing it themselves. They could control predictability and price points and increase their margin and then also decrease their expense which will increase the margin at the same time. So this is what they're able to do. You got to pay close attention. Now, these are the details that experts say that they want, but they're available on the internet. People just don't go looking for it. They want to see it at the, an event. In the enclosure from the ground up uh, here, we are painting the, the enclosure here. We're ensuring that we take care of, of all the processes. And some of the benefits for that is, is like you can control and ensure that you can leverage all of your mechanisms and processes uh, mm -hmm. that are in place to provide the right quality and have full control and autonomy of, of your destiny. So you mentioned um, kind of touching back, and that, that's really good. I think that's definitely uh, key, obviously, to any company if they could basically make um, and design their own products. That way there is no um, supply chain issues down the road. Like you, know, like you said, a lot of companies uh, encountered during, um, during the COVID area a couple of years. So um, is that something that you guys are aiming toward, or you guys are almost already there in terms of being completely 100% vertically integrated, as you said? Good hey, question. Aiming towards, uh, as, as the technology changes, as like, products are constantly getting uh, innovation, we're constantly learning, uh, there is always like uh, ways to improve. So uh, part of our mission uh, that I mentioned is like, how do we create a fast paced environment of innovation and continuous improvement? So through those learning processes and cycles, there is always like great ideas that come from our workforce, from our engineers, from, from our designers, and, and basically as well as the industry is evolving, like yeah. things are constantly changing. So I would say like the, the, only, the only constant is change, especially in this type yeah. of business uh, that, is, that is basically just scaling. So it's, it's super important that we'll always stay humble, that we are always open to learn, and, and we continue like chasing that, uh, that continuous improvement mentality as you.
What else is there to be said? Now, again, guys, this is where all the magic happens. And then unfortunately, where all the magic happens, as you can see, I was here a long time ago. Great video. The information was needed and I appreciate it. Great interview. That Tesla worker was definitely nervous and that he was a little nervous. Yes, he was. He's probably not, you know, used to cameras and being in front of the camera a lot, but he definitely was delivering on the details. That is the details that matters. Sometimes guys are going to have to go dive in for the details. You're going to have to look at different YouTube videos that are available online outside of Jim Cramer and in the stock media and everything that they produce. That's short mindset. That's clickbait. That's something different. That's not the fundamentals. That's not Warren Buffett style. That's not diving deep into a company. Now you want details at an event where there's drinks being served, like, <laughs> and then for the most detail oriented company, it just sounds funny. Now this stupid dog is barking up a storm. So I'll catch you guys on the next one. Like, share, subscribe. It's electric. <laughs> I see you guys on the next one. Everyone hates Tesla. <laughs>